So uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Diogo Pinheiro. I'm the Assistant Director for Kirka, and with me today here is Alison Grindel, the Administrative Assistant for Kirka. And today we're going to talk about the student-faculty collaborative mini-grant proposals, right? How to submit them, what they are, how we are going to evaluate them, all that stuff. So first things first, oh, wait. Uh, Kirka is an office that exists to support undergraduate research and creative initiatives, right? We can help with mentorship, funding, recognition, publication. You can go to our website and find uh, uh, our information. Uh, most of our applications take place through the UNG InfoReady site. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that everybody's clear here that when we say that we support undergraduate research and creative initiatives, the idea is that it's not just your trip typical, you know, uh, scientific research, right? We support arts and creative projects as well. And so what we are going to be talking about today is uh, our mini grants that are supposed to support undergraduate research and creative projects, right? Uh, our definition of undergraduate research is fairly broad. It's an inquiry or exploration conducted and disseminated by an undergraduate student that makes an intellectual or creative contribution to the discipline and to applied practice. So again, it's not just your traditional uh, scientific research, uh, projects in music, in the arts, in, in, in theater, so on, also fall under this um, umbrella. And for the mini grants specifically, this, pro this uh, opportunity that we're gonna talk about today, we're going to be talking about a process that's going to be student-led. In other words, the students are going to be applying themselves but they can come from any background, right? It doesn't have to be biology, it doesn't have to be psychology, it, it can be any background at all, right? And so first we're going to talk a little bit about the details of the mini grant. So the mini grant can pay up to a thousand dollars that can be used in, in the process of conducting research or a creative activity, right? The, traditionally that money has been spent on things like lab materials, cameras, computer software were allowed. Um, and sometimes it can also be used for travel if the travel is for the conduct of research, not the presentation of research, right? You have to travel to an archive somewhere. You have to travel to Savannah to conduct research by the sea, et cetera, that may be allowed, right? Uh, what is allowed or not is dictated by the state. So we might need to check on a few things, but the idea here is that anything that is an expense that goes into the conduct of a research or of a creative project can be uh, 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 paid for with this money, right? The application for these mini grants are due uh, is due on at midnight at the end of the day on September 29th, right? 11.59 to be more precise. And then we hope to take a couple of weeks to make that funding decision, right? Uh, we don't know exactly when the decision will be made, but we guarantee that by October 27th, we'll have made the decision, right? Um, the on, the, on the student side, for those who win this award, what we expect from them is that they will work closely with their faculty mentor uh, in terms of making sure that they're spending money on things that are worthwhile for their project, things that make sense. And then we expect that after the fact, uh, that research that we will have helped fund will be presented at either the annual research conference here at UNG, one of the other Kirkus sponsored events like the annual research pitch, or an, a, an external disciplinary specific conference, right? You will have until May of 2025 to do that as a condition of getting this award, right? Um, all the money has to be spent in this academic year. And then by the end of the academic year, my first to be more exact, uh, we need kind of like a summary of what you spent the money on, what were the outcomes, what were the products of the funded research. Um, and so that is what this, this, this grant money is for, right? It's to fund the conduct of research, and here's what we expect, right? We expect you to present at a conference, either internal or external, and you ex we expect some sort of report from you. 
So if you are applying to the Kirka uh, um, mini grants, uh, the way that we select who's going to win is going to be a competitive process, right? We wish we could fund everybody who applies, but the reality is that our budget is limited and um, as a result, we have generally more applications than we can fund. And so the way that we decide who we're going to fund is by creating a ranking of Kirka proposals based on ratings, right? And so we are going to have a committee of faculty members from all different disciplines and colleges. We have a rubric that we'll talk about in a, in a second, and we ask these faculty to grade this propo these proposals based on that rubric, right? And then at the end of the process, we will look at the numerical scores, we will look at qualitative comments, and then the proposals that uh, you know score the highest have the, the like the best comments uh, will be selected for funding. Right? Uh, we will be funding at this point probably five projects, um, and so the idea is that it's going to be you know a competitive process where the top five get funded. Um, on the topic of the committee that's going to be selecting and grading these uh, 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 proposals, it's important to keep in mind that since they're coming from all different departments and from all different disciplines, your proposal should be written in such a way that someone who is not from your field will understand, right? So it should be written in such a way that a lay person would understand what you're doing because Maybe you're in biology, but the person evaluating your proposal is in the visual arts, right, or vice versa. So make sure that your proposal is written in a way that a general audience would understand. And so in terms of what goes into the proposal, we have to, we want you to submit a proposal narrative. What are you going to do? What are you trying to accomplish, et cetera, et cetera? A budget, right? What are you planning on spending money on? A mentor support letter where the mentor says that not only they're going to help you with that project, but that that project is is doable. And then certifications, right? You're going to have to sign a few things uh, uh, for us. And so we're going to go into each of these items in more detail now so that you understand exactly what we are looking for uh, in proposal, right? So the biggest thing, the main thing that you're going to submit is going to be the narrative, right? The narrative is going to include the kind of the story of your project, right? What are its aims and objectives? What are you trying to do, right? What is your goal, right? And what are the expected uh, products? In other words, are you trying to do this so that you end up with a publication, with uh, a conference presentation, with a particular performance, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, you're going to explain your methodology and background. In other words, what method are you using? Are you familiar with that method? Uh, why is that method appropriate? You're going to tell us the significance and rationale, the so what question, right? Why is this project important? The impact that it's going to have in your career or education, right? Is this important because it's going to open doors for you in graduate school? It's because it's going to uh, get you professional opportunities? What's the idea? Then we want a timeline, right? Oh, by February, we hope to have this in place. By March, we hope to have this in place, et cetera, et cetera. Your references, which are going to be anything that you cited right here. References, we're not talking about, you know, a uh, letter of references, right? We're talking about your, you know, the, citing the articles that you mentioned in your proposal. And this whole thing is supposed to be three pages exclusive of references, right? So in other words, the references can be, be on page four, right? But the proposed, the narrative itself, it's supposed to be three pages of narrative, right? So uh, you're gonna have to be a little bit concise, right? Because again, we're asking you to touch on a bunch of different areas, but you, you're you gonna have to make sure that you're touching each of these uh, aspects of, of your uh, proposal, right? On the aims and objectives part, what we mean by aims and objectives is, what is the project, right? What is the, the 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 proposed research, the proposed activity that you're doing, right? Uh, is it uh, a research into a particular uh, um, 
you know, living thing in biology? Is it a music performance uh, for for your music major? What is it that you're trying to do, right? The the the, the project where you lay down step by step what what's going to be involved in your project, and you should make this clear so that once again someone who is not from your field would understand, right? And so this here is going to be kind of your starting point of your narrative, right? And it's going to be a significant part of our rubric. So here you can see uh, how we're going to uh, evaluate uh, your aims and objectives section of, of your proposal, right? So an exceptional uh, aims and objections uh, objectives uh, uh, part of the proposal would be clear, concise, easy to understand, where we can see that your project is original, it's innovative, it's creative in some way, right? A very poor uh, 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 part of the narrative here that uh, aims and objectives part of the narrative would be one where we don't really know what you're trying to do, maybe use too much jargon and no one else can understand what you're trying to say. It's hard to understand what is new, what's what's creative about your project, right? So that's uh, uh, an important part of the narrative here, and it has its own rubric section. You can see the numerical scores above, you know, where it's going to lead to an actual numerical score for your proposal. The goals and expected products will be like the, the big picture things that you want to have out of this project, right? Are you doing this because you want to have something to present at a conference? Are you trying to do this to perform at an event? Are you trying to do this to get a publication or maybe to apply for an, an, an additional grant, right? That's This is the goal and expected products in a very kind of tangible way, right? Oh, I want to, I'm going to use this to, to publish two papers, right? That's That's an example of a goal, right? And so... Uh, if we're looking at an example, right, you look here at this this uh, text here, which is a, a, a biology uh, uh, project where they are saying that their goals is to understand these things. And based on these goals, they want to take the results that they have and present it at the North Georgia Research Conference or the Georgia Academy of Science, et cetera, et cetera, right? So goal, what you're trying to achieve or understand product, what you're trying to get out of this in a very tangible way, right? And so here, once again, we have a section of the rubric that deals with the goals and expected, expected products, right? The leftmost cell there shows you what would look like an ex excellent proposal, right? The goals of the project are clearly stated. Significant products are described, such as presentations, blah, 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 blah. And uh, uh, you can see how this can lead to to kind of uh, uh, this this growth and and, and uh, expansion of your capabilities, right? And so the idea here, once again, we have a very specific rubric that our reviewers are going to have, right? And they're going to pick based on what they see in your proposal, which one of these cells your proposal falls into. On the methodology and background, uh, we want you to explain the procedures that will be used. And again, think lay audience, right? So explain the method, but explain it in a way that it's going to be clear to the people reading it. Identify the things that you need to accomplish the task, right? And this is going to be important, right? Because part of what we're going to be funding are the tools and equipments necessary to accomplish the task, right? Show that you are familiar, that you understand, that you have... Uh, 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 looked into the, the literature and know that this is kind of the state of the art of doing th certain things. And then describe your own experiences uh, with this type of research, right? So, oh, I'm going to do this, this method and this method has been identified by the literature as being the best because of X, Y, and Z. And in the past, you know, I, I took a class that, uh, where we ha we learn how to do this in the appropriate way, right? That's what we're looking for in this methodology and background part. And here, once again, we have a section of the rubric that deals with that specifically, right? 
So an excellent proposal will have a proposed materials and methodology is clear and understandable. The project design reflects an understanding of current research in the field. It is clear how the proposed project is inspired by past research or creative activities, right? So you're saying, I'm going to do this method. This method is the best. And here's why I am able to do this method, how experienced I am in doing this method, right? This is the idea for this section. Next, we have the significance and rationale for, uh, from, for your project. What inspired you to uh, to do this particular research? Why is it significant to you? Why is it significant to the field that you're in? Why is this important, right? Both to you and to uh, the field that you want to to uh, participate in. And so, once again, if we look at previous examples, right? This here is a biological piece of research where they were trying to understand. Uh, 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 colonies of different uh, uh, insects. And so here you have a very clear example of the significance, right? Oh, lots of money is lost because of the of these insects. So we want to understand them more, right? And so once again, we have uh, a rubric uh, for the significance and rationale part of the project. Uh, so if the proposed activities fit clearly into the broader scholarly or creative field at the local, regional, or national level, individual scholastic and personal experiences are directly tied to the project goals. The student has the, the knowledge and the skills to fulfill the goals, et cetera, et cetera. If that's present there in your significance and rationale, you're going to be scoring on the, on, the, on the left side there of the rubric, which is, you know, more points, right? Um, next, and something that is going to be very personal to you, uh, is going to be to describe the impact of this project on your career or education, right? We want to see where do you want to go and how would this project help you there, right? Oh, you want to get into graduate school and to get into a good graduate school, you need to have shown, uh, you know, research experience, you know, that's something good. Or maybe you want to go into the workforce and by demonstrating certain skills, it's going to be easier to get a job, right? So once again, here we have an item in the rubric where, you know, if you make it clear how this activity fits into your long-term plans, long-term career aspirations, you're going to score well on this part of the rubric. And then the last thing in the uh, uh, narrative is going to be your timeline. Right, where you're going to say, oh, by November, I hope to do this. By December, I hope to do this. By February, I want to do this. And here, what we are looking for is whether you have a realistic sense of what you can accomplish, right? You can write the best proposal in the world that would win you a Nobel Prize, but it would take 10 years to complete well, our funding is for one year, right? And so here is where we see that the stuff that you want to do is feasible in the one year that we'll be able to fund you, right? And so uh, the, the rubric is about whether the timeline is suitable and, and you know reasonable and covers everything that you said that you want to do, right? And if it doesn't, that's where you would lose some points. So when you're writing your narrative, it's very important for you to be mindful of the rubric, right? And, and the page where you apply for uh, the mini grant, you can see a copy of the rubric there so that you don't have to like pause this presentation at the rubric section if you want to read it carefully, right? Be very, very mindful of the rubric because that is are going to be uh, uh, evaluating you, right? So make sure that all the items in the rubric are covered under your narrative, make sure that you're respecting the formatting guidelines, make sure that you're writing in a way that someone who is not from your field will understand, show that you're serious about this, be as specific as you can get into your timeline, and make sure that the reader understands that you're excited about this project, right? That this is a project that motivates you, right? And so the idea here is that we want a, a realistic 
but creative project that is going to open doors for you professionally or in your education, right? So that's going to be the key cornerstone of how we evaluate your proposal using the rubric to understand the narrative. Of course, besides the narrative, you also have to submit a budget. And so in the budget, what we want to see is a detailed list of all the supplies and materials that you're gonna need, right? What specifically, how many of that thing, what is the, the price right now? What is the shipping estimate? What is uh, the total expected cost? What is the link? We know that prices can change over time. We know that, you know, price availability can change. So, you know, we can work with you on th if things change after the budget is submitted. But what we want to see in the budget is that you've done that legwork to make sure that um, you have a realistic project that can fit under the amount that uh, we can pay, right? If you have, you know, the, a perfect uh, uh, project, but it would require you to build a new facility on campus, obviously that's not something that we can fund, right? So uh, the budget is where we see if your project is reasonable. It's something that we can fit under uh, our uh, pro uh, program, right? So the budget has no page limit. The budget needs kind of a date for, for when you want to spend money and for when you kind of evaluated the cost of different things. But again, make sure that you are very thorough, right? Every item, everything that you need with a line there in the budget. In terms of things that we cannot fund, we cannot fund uh, uh, conference travel, right? So. We can fund travel for you to conduct research, but we cannot fund travel for you to present research. Uh, we cannot fund food and we cannot fund some incentives, but again, there are some incentives that we can, others that we can't, we, have, we, we would have to discuss that individually with you. Um, we cannot fund individual licenses that are under the name of the student, right? A lot of the things that we buy will have to be in the name of the mentor. And then software and devices, they can be purchased, but they would have to go through a few additional steps to make sure that it's an allowable expense. And here it's not us trying to be picky, it's us trying to comply with state law. So keep that in mind as you create your budget. Besides the narrative and the budget, we also need a mentor support letter, right? And in that mentor support letter, you're going to have to ask your mentor to, to write you a letter. And in that mentor support letter, we want to see the mentor describe their relationship to you, right? Are they, advi are they your, your advisor? Are they your professor? Are they, you know, your mentor? What's the idea there? We want your mentor to describe how prepared they think you are for your, this project a statement about their plan on how they're going to oversee the research that you're going to be conducting, a statement that clearly indicates that the student is the primary author of the application, right? We don't want faculty to write the narrative in the budget. This is a student-led process, and so we want the mentor to acknowledge that their only part in this here in the submission is the mentor letter and then, of course, the mentoring afterwards. And then a statement where uh, the mentor is going to work with us and help us oversee the purchase of materials and their storage and their use and so on, right? So the mentor support letter is supposed to be two pages maximum, uh, and it should be uh, written by your mentor, but submitted by you uh, when you complete your application. And then after you have these materials ready, as you start to submit, you're going to have to certify a bunch of things through digital signature on InfoReady, where you're certifying that, that what you're submitting is your own work. You're certifying that you're committing to present by the May 2025 uh, deadline. You're certifying that you're committing to submit a report by the May 2024 uh, deadline. You understand that if you're doing any sort of research with human subjects, you understand that you're going to have to get approval from the IRB. Um, 
you under, you're going to have to certify that you understand that all purchase requests must be must be made by March 31st to comply with the fiscal year. Um, you agreed to have your research overseen by your mentor, and then that you are going to comply with UNG and USG regulations, right? So this year is just you, you know, certifying that you agree with all these terms. And so to wrap this all up and to sum this all up, uh, deadline September 29th at the end of the day, you have to submit four items, a proposal narrative that is three pages maximum, a budget that has no page limit, a mentor support letter that has two pages maximum, and certifying and acknowledging all the different requirements as you go through the process of submitting things through InfoReady. If you have any questions at any point, feel free to email us at kirka at ung.edu, and we will be glad to help you out and make sure that we're all on the same page as you get ready to submit. So uh, thank you so much. And again, make sure that you reach out in case you have any questions.